Junkies! So this is Jim Jarmusch, the director's The Dead Don't Die. Jim Jarmusch, for those of you who don't know, is a, he's, how would you describe him? I mean, he's a big figure in American indie cinema. He is. And he made films like Down By Law, Stranger Than Paradise, Ghost Dog with Forrest Whitaker. He's often worked with Tom Waits. Yes. And Iggy Pop Iggy appears Pop, in a lot yeah. of his films. And he, he does sort of, what I call the word is loungecore films, which is a sort of genre of music which is very lugubrious, very cool, very chilled, a bit stoned, mm. a bit slow, mm. uh, but sort of achingly hip. Yeah. And yeah. all of his films are sort of achingly hip, yes. if you know what I mean. Yes. And the thing I like about him is that he's not going to be hurried and he's not going to be harried by the industry. No. It's also a testimony, I think, to Jim Jarmusch that this cast in this film, The Dead Don't Die, Bill it's Murray. Astonishing. Well, it's astonishing. And Bill Murray doesn't give much more than five minutes of screen time to any project. No. So he obviously has a close bond with him. So mm. it's, it's good to see Bill Murray in a full film. He's got Adam Driver. Chloe Sevigny, who I'm having a bit of a love-hate relationship with at the, with uh, the uh, moment. She's right up at the top of my... Uh, Tilda Swinton. And, who I don't and, normally like. No, Danny Glover from Lethal oh, Weapon and The Colour Purple. See. That was lovely. Um, and and a, a numerous supporting, supporting cast members, ranging from Iggy Pop. Can't forget the Steve Buscemi in there. I mean, Steve literally, Buscemi. you start to run your name through. And then Caleb Landry-Jones, hey. who Caleb Landry-Jones is becoming, I said afterwards, he's sort of becoming our generation's um, Brad Dorif. Yeah. Isn't he? Who, who always used to have small parts, yeah. significant parts, and he was always strange. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's the best word to describe him, and this guy is. Yeah, and even even small parts from people like Selena Gomez. So it's, it's an absolutely star-laden. So here's the thing. So this, we went into this knowing this was going to be an incredible incredibly arch, very comedic, very funny. We've seen the trailers. Um, the, the biggest cast of zombies ever disassembled, or stars disassembled, wasn't yes, it, in a movie yes, or something. Yes. So it's, it's firmly got its tongue in its cheek. Really, the judgment for me on this film is less whether it was going to succeed in being a sort of pastiche of the zombie film. It was whether it was going to sort of do anything different or systematically different to things like Shaun of the Dead. Yes. Uh, and whether it could improve on that. It starts with... Well, it, it's set, isn't it? Where is it set? It's set in this sort of little downbeat town called Centerville, um, very sort of generically bland yeah. American town, middle America, middle America um, with incredibly sort of calm, down to earth police officers, Adam Driver and Bill Murray, sort of trotting around, monitoring what's going on. And from the, from the immediate moment at the very beginning, everything's pre prefigured with Adam Driver saying, I've got a bad feeling about today. Yeah. Things aren't gonna end well. Yeah, and all of this is done incredibly slowly. That's it's the thing. It's an incredibly it's... slow film. Yeah. And yet it's not boring, I didn't find no, it boring. No, not boring at all, but... Um... And maybe one would call that in real time. Maybe that's the way people talk to each other. Yeah. But we've got so used to everything being rushed mm. that it's their, their dialogue, the two of them, and obviously mm. they work together, Bill Murray and Adam Driver go around in their police car. Yeah. It's just very, very beautifully observed, slow. People are huge fans of Shaun of the Dead. And a zombie film if of any genre is very self-aware mm. of its own sort of rules and limitations. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that every zombie film sends itself up. It, far from it, it doesn't. They do take themselves seriously. I mean, in fact, one of my problems with The Walking Dead as a series was that it, it kind of took itself too seriously oh, for too long. Yeah, yeah. You know, slow walking zombies is... is, is in is, themselves. You yeah, are quite, actually quite tedious. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, but I do love seeing all their body parts. There is a sort of strange obsession that we have with... Do you have an obsession with zombies? Yeah. What do you like about zombies? Well, it's not what I like. It, I mean, I, I, I just love horror films generally, but what always scares me to death about zombie films yes. is the fact that they all get together and they right. keep coming. Right. And that keeping coming is a, is a particular trope, isn't mm. it, of zombie films that the other films well, yeah, they films keep haven't got. Yeah. And that's what's so scary, because you know that once they smell you, presumably, or they've got yeah. human scent, scent of blood. they will be millions when you open the door. That is terrifying. Yeah. So, See, the thing that always makes me feel relatively calm about a zombie apocalypse coming is that they all move other than in Train to Busan quite slowly. I always feel it's my like favourite film of all. Train to Busan is quite something, but I mean, I always, I've always felt that you could outrun a zombie. Oh, do you? I do. Yeah, know. yeah. I mean, obviously, when they come on mass and tens of thousands around a corner, mm. and then they're, they're coming from behind you as well, you're in trouble. Um, so yeah, no, the zombie for me, I mean, the zombie for me is all about George A. Romero, Night yes. of the Living Dead. Well, it, yeah. um, uh, you know, all of the Dawn of the Dead, Night of the Dead, The Walking Dead, all that stuff. 
you know, inscribed within the idea of zombies is always, I think we've talked about it before, is the idea of a sort of comment on capitalism. Yes. It's the idea that, you know, even when we're dead, we want to keep coming back and walking around shopping malls and eating, even though we don't have a stomach, we have an appetite, even yes. though there's no digestive system. Mm -hmm. We've learned how to just consume, consume, consume. And so the zombie is a manifestation of that. How would you say this film sort of moves along? I mean, it, it, there's not a massive plot. There isn't, and I don't know whether now is the time to say this, but there is a sort of strand to this film where you're getting just the action, which is basically that, as Adam Driver says, things are a bit strange. Things um, are a bit odd. The, the daylight, daylight hours are extended. Daylight suddenly looks like it shouldn't be daylight. Yeah. Um, I quite like that. I thought that was I thought that was, yeah, I yeah. did too. Do we actually see anything landing or anything? There's no, we don't see anything landing, but we do use, they do use a lot of television um, sort of news flashes and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. To in in a non-serious fashion, they suggest that the, the tectonic plates or the magnetism of the pop no polar fracking. Polar fracking. Polar fracking has Could caused the, the Earth's axis to go Shift. skew whiff. Yeah. And in the process it's it's essentially uh, changed the entire sort of biorhythms of the planet yeah. and the dead now can walk. Yeah, and certain tropes carry on going through the film. One of those tropes is the theme music, which is yes. The Dead Don't Die. Oh, by and Sturges, whatever his name is. Prescott. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and it, you, we hear that when the film opens, but then it's referred to in about the first five minutes. Yeah. So you sort of know that that's got to be unusual in a film, even a funny film, is that they're referring back to the, in a postmodern way. Yeah, yeah, in a postmodern way. It's very meta. I know this that film tune, is very meta. Says, I know that tune. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. It's a steam tune. Well, it's almost one of the first things that happens. They're driving around together. And I have to say, I think this is one of Bill Murray, I'm going to say this from the outset. I think this is one of Bill, this is a Bill, if you're a Bill Murray and Adam Driver fan, you can sit and just enjoy every minute yeah, of this film. Minute, yeah. Because it's his... They don't put a foot wrong. They don't put a foot wrong. I mean, Bill Murray doesn't have to say anything for him to be hysterical. Faces. But Adam Driver meets him, mm. like with like, all mm. the way through. He's not intimidated. He doesn't play second fiddle. No. They, they match each other. They complement each other. They do. So brilliantly. But yeah, right at the beginning of the film, they're driving around and they put the music on, which is, I forget who it's by, Sturges, whatever his name. And uh, Bill Murray goes, isn't this kind of familiar? Mm. And Adam Driver goes, yeah, it's the theme Thank tune. You. That's all he, that's that's all all he says. says. And you're sort of left thinking, right, okay, so they're this riffing. <laughs> and there are a couple of other moments in the film where they riff on the idea that this is a film that's been written by Jim Jarmusch and that they're all in it. Yeah. Um, now, I've read some reviews have been very unkind about that, saying... About that particular About aspect? that device, saying it was, it was too clumsily done and that Shaun of the Dead and films like it did it better, that if you're going to riff on the zombie format, you need to be a bit more sophisticated. I think, I personally think reviewers have got the wrong end of the stick I on do, that. I do, I do. I think too many other films like Shaun of the Dead try to almost ape and observe the same horror tropes of the, I mean, this was resolutely not frightening. No. I mean, it, it's resolute. The Nothing most frightening thing that happened to all of us when we were in it was Bill Murray accidentally falling down a hole. Yes. And we all let it happen. It was very well yeah. done. And you're meant to jump. But I thought that that was kind of, there was a purpose to that, that that was the most jumpy bit. Yeah. Yes, there are ghouls and there's a lot of eating and gore and yes, all that kind of stuff. But even that's done so stupidly. Mm. So I, I, I disagree. I thought that the, the and the motivate now, he's obviously riffing on the idea that zombies come back from the dead and, and, and want to sort of keep eating consumeristly in a sort of, mm. you know, capitalist manner. But what's the, what's the motif with these ones? Um, is it the last thing they were doing? What was the, the thing, thing that, that they were obsessed with in life? Most obsessed with, yeah, yeah. yeah. So either music, uh, coffee. Well, coffee. the one I loved was that Iggy Pop Iggy. and his girlfriend stagger as zombies into the diner. Oh, that's right. That's the first. Yeah. They eat the the, the host. The host, yeah. And, but then and then they move on and all they go coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's something quite funny. I mean, I do think you know. I mean, Iggy Pop has always looked like a zombie anyway. Well, someone did say that. They said he looks kind of no different. He doesn't. He's, he's so small. He's very funny though, isn't it? He's very funny. He's very, very funny. funny. I mean, yeah. there's a point where he's leaving the diner, having left destruction behind him, and he bounces off the uh, yes. railings, which just tickled me and Kiki. Yeah, to it yeah. was so funny. No, it, it was. It was very funny. And then you had this other zombie. So meanwhile, but back. You, don't forget, back in the police station Jailhouse. from the beginning, which is where Chloe is in all this, because there's three police officers. Mm. Bill Murray, Adam Driver, and then the female one is back at base, yeah. and that's Chloe Serena. She's very good. Can I just say, I, I've had a lot of criticism oh, for no. Chloe in recent years. No, 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 I really have. And to, to the point that we're watching American Horror Story at the moment, I don't think she's particularly given that either. This is her best performance for a long time. She essentially plays the straight she person, does. doesn't she? She does. 
Yeah. Where all this is horrific to and she can't cope with yes. any of it. So in the jail house, they've got, what's her name, Miranda or, or someone? Carol, the, uh, yeah, I can't remember the yeah. name of the character played by Carol Kane, but she's, yeah. um, has she died at that point? Yeah, she's dead. She's, she's dead, dead and then she's in the jail cell. That's right, and they're waiting for the mortician, you're right, yeah. So what happens is overnight, more and more dead people come alive. Um, and you've got this strange sort of device that, that John Moose uses throughout the film, which is Tom Waits, bizarrely, is a sort of <laughs> spiritual guru yes. in the forest. Man of the woods. A man of the woods. Which is a real American trope. That it is, is an American old trope. old American trope, I have to say, going back to people like Walt Whitman. I mean, that's a huge... A huge American trope, yeah. but, but looking staggeringly like uh, well, Will Ferrell. And I quite like the way they did this. He was sort of wandering around reading in the rooms of the moon and in the sort of growth of mushrooms. He's the first person that we meet yes. other than the two. And the yeah. reason I'm saying that is that they go to, they're in the woods in the first place to investigate what they think is yes. a, a killing yeah, of, yeah, of some people. And at that point, I think I was expecting Tom Waits to be the first zombie. Zombie, oh, yeah, yeah. And we don't yeah. know that he's not for no. quite a bit, do we? No. But then it transpires he's the narrator. It added this sort of... With through binocular vision. Through binocular. I like the way it looked, the whole thing. Actually. I thought it was beautifully shot. Yeah, I Brilliantly did. shot. You know, there's no sophisticated plot here. No. More and more dead people arrive, more and more potential victims are, are stood up. You have the Caleb character who runs the local uh, uh, petrol station. You've got Steve Buscemi who's, a, who's an obnoxious farmer. Yeah. You've got the you've got the kids, what are they, the hipsters from wherever coming with Selena Gomez and her two, yeah. two fellas. Yeah. Um, you've got Danny Glover who's... You've got the um, the people, the, the, the kids in the in the not rehab place, what it's called, that like prison. Oh yeah, yeah. You've got the juvenile detention the, centre. Yeah. To them, they sort of vanished, didn't they, halfway through the film? They did, and the only important thing of them is there's these three kids, two girls and a boy. And the boy says at some point he's obviously a nerd, and he says the thing about the scientific access yes. being out. So yeah, yeah, yeah. in that sense, they're telling us again that yeah, that's yeah, what, yeah, yeah. as they're looking out of the yeah, window, yeah, yeah. as they're looking out of the window. And yeah. all the way through this, Adam Driver's going, I've got a bad feeling about this yeah. now. At this point, the film sets its rhythm and its tone within mm. the first 15 to 20 minutes. And it's really, and I think the reason it's getting a sort of sw a swathe of kind of mediocre and kind of bad reviews mm. is it's either you're up for this yeah. or you're not up for oh, yeah. it. And I could see, and I'm going to pre-warn people who perhaps like a film that has a bit of pace, mm -hmm. a bit of narrative structure, that, that this might not That's be the film not for you. No, get. it's not what you're going to get. What you're going to get here is quite a, I would say self-indulgent, but I, I'd say it's a, it's a shaggy dog story. Yeah. It's, a, it's an extended shaggy dog story. Yeah. And if you're a fan of Bill Murray and you've got a slight man crush on Adam Driver like I have, yeah. this is your film for you. The other thing I did like about this film was peppered all the way through it, visually and in the script, were so many other in-film jokes. Yes. Lovely moment where Adam Driver hands his key ring to, uh, to uh, Tilda Swinton, who's the mortician. Um, and he's got, a, he's got a Starship Destroyer on his key ring. And she says, Star Wars. And he goes, yeah. And she says, Brilliant fiction. Yeah. And and you just think, I don't know. I have to think for a minute. Yeah. Because, I mean, Kylo yeah. Ren, obviously. So, yeah. you know, so I liked all that sort of stuff. I, you know, for, for film buffs and yeah. film fans, yeah. it's a real kind of indulgence. It is. Um, what did you think of Tilda Swinton's? Well, Tilda Swinton, who I think is a superb actress, but she gets on my nerves a bit. Cause she does get on my nerves a bit. Yeah, too. she's always seemed superior to everything else. But, mm. um, in this, she was perfect. She plays the mortician. She's Scottish, which in itself makes her weird. Well, that lovely line, isn't there? Yeah. When they're looking at her, going, well, why is she so strange, says Adam Driver. And what does Bill Murray, Bill Murray say? says, she's Scottish. She's Scottish. She's Scottish. She's Scottish. That's, That's it. the answer. Yeah. 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 Very funny. And, and she just happens to be an expert in whatever the martial art is. Yes, yeah, samurai have a sword. sword warrior. When we see her next, she's in her job, which is being a. Uh, mm. That's very funny. The oh, the mortician. Oh, yeah. So she's bodies. putting the makeup on the two dead bodies. Which is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. She's ridiculous. ever had makeup like that. You know, to I... make them look normal. Yeah, she's clearly not like a good clowns. mortician, yeah. or she's just taking the piss. It's hysterical. Um, there were many moments in this one where, after the event, you go, "Why were they doing that?" No, yeah, and what, the, what? That's what's so clever. So the joke of that scene was that they keep they open their eyes one at a time, and at, the, at one point she says, "Are you in this together?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it's in the trailer. That was the joke. So they said. Maybe no reference to the fact that she was putting yes. blue eyeshadow and yeah. whatever, but yeah. that's clever. But going back to Chloe, so Chloe Sabinu, you, you, you liked Chloe? I thought Chloe was great, it was perfectly suited her. But what about that moment outside the diner? Just, uh, there are countless funny moments. This is a great film, not that I'm advocating getting stoned with anyone. This is a great film to see with a bunch of mates yeah. of an evening, if mm. you've had a few to drink or whatever, and you just want to have a chuckle and it's on in the background. And if you turn away for five minutes, you're not going to miss a part of the no, plot. No. But there was a moment where Steve Bush, uh, where um, uh, Bill Murray and Adam Driver are outside the diner where there's been the first murder or deaths 
And he goes, Chloe, uh, I want you to deal with crowd control. Crowd control? There's, There's three people, people in the background, but what happened, What I love about Jarmusch is he fo follows the process of uh, yeah. escorting these people three people back, away. Yeah. So and also, it's the rep repetition, which is, I suppose, the key to a lot of good mm. humour. Is that one of the, as well as Adam Driver's thing of um, what, what have we already said? It's not going to end badly. It's all going to end badly. badly. Bill Murray, in the end, says to Adam Driver, what are you thinking? Yeah. Paul's, well, I'm thinking zombies. There's, there's really not yeah. even a... See, I, I thought that whilst, and that's my point, I think that's, you've, you've just taken on the vital point at which this film tells you how it's taken the piss out of yeah. zombie films. It's not trying, this is where I find reviewers a bit unimaginative. There isn't just a way to send up zombie films. No. There's obviously there's uh, Simon Pegg's way, which was very very entertaining, and there are loads of other ways. That you yeah. can send. But I thought what he was doing in that moment was he punctured all of the drama, yeah, and did. he made us all laugh at every film we've ever taken seriously, yeah. like yeah. The Walking Dead and all yeah. this stuff that lots of people have invested loads of hours and time and yeah. effort into. And I thought he, I just thought it was a very witty low key and it's like so how do we find out that I, I think it's zombies yeah I thought that was and funny and then there, there's a great sort of long riff that keeps recurring where they keep various people who don't aren't as sure as Adam Driver that it's the it's zombies say things like well the, these dead people don't, it's, it's the undead he gets yeah. quite yeah, cross that really people annoyed. aren't referring yeah. to people properly yeah. and yeah. Um, I, I actually as a viewer didn't know because I'm not very well up in my zombie films how you could kill a zombie I had to ask oh people right yes with a, with a... you have to shoot them in the head I, thought there I didn't realise that I thought there were a few moments in it where he he could have well, dare I say it, extended the humour or extended some of the characterisation because I mean like Caleb's character in the in the petrol station I thought him and Danny Glover were thrown away a bit too quickly uh, yeah, there yeah like, he's so brilliant oh and he's guy. so brilliant he's so watchable and I just I kind of he's just an wanted expert more. in horror film and film generally and he's sort of like the voice of um, yeah, yeah, the I know how shop. to deal with this because I've seen so many films and he's in a shop which is like my idea of heaven which yeah, is comics like and, and, room, and yeah. if you look at every shot in the petrol station he's got badges there's film references yeah. wearing a Nosferatu t-shirt yeah. and all this kind of stuff. I wanted more from Steve Buscemi. I mean, I thought we could have Steve had a little... Steve Buscemi, the, in, the always incredibly Angry. exasperated, bad-tempered man. Yeah. And um, he does a lot of stuff with Chloe as well. He does. Because on Pete, well, they were I, both in. Claims of fame. I once spent a day with Chloe Savigny and Steve Buscemi, interviewing them both for his directorial debut. Trees oh, Loud. Trees Loud. Yeah, and that's when I developed a crush on Chloe, and I literally spent about two hours with Steve Buscemi chatting. Oh. I mean, that's like manna from heaven. But yeah, so there were, there, you know, I wouldn't say this is perfect. I would say that there were many, many elements to it that I could have had, I could have been more, even more overindulged yeah, with, really, yeah. in a sense. Because it's so low key, it's, and as Marcus said, don't expect any sort of major, no. you know, events because you don't get them. No. And they, he resolutely keeps it deadpan. Yeah. And they are brilliant at keeping it deadpan. They, yeah. they just riff off each other, Absolutely. don't they? Absolutely. This is definitely a Jim Jarmusch yeah. film. And again, it comes back to that thing of if you like what Jim Jarmusch does, you're going to like this. Um, I think zombie, fa if, you're, if you're a straight down the line zombie aficionado, this might just really irritate you. Yeah. Because yes, it's not- Yes, if you're a walking dead Yeah, yeah absolutely. Right. And also if you, you know, and it's not, it's not even necessarily sophisticated humor. It's just a really, it's quite, a st I tell you what it was. It was like a, it was like an hour and a half of mindfulness. Yeah, in a way, yeah. It was yeah, like a meditative watch. It was a bit Buddhist. Yeah, It's like yeah. it's really calm, it's really chilled. It happens to have zombies involved. Yeah. It, it's like I spent an hour and a half with, hanging out with Adam Driver and Bill Murray. Yeah, the only thing, the only time that I did think, I mean, I'd thought a couple of times, it'd gone through my mind earlier on. I don't know how he's going to end this. Bill Murray turns to Adam Driver and says, why do you keep saying this is going to end badly? How do you know this is going to end badly? And Adam Driver and deadpan manager says, I've read the script. And Bill Murray's outraged. Bill Murray says, the script? What do you mean you've read the script? And he goes, what, I Jim sent you the whole script? script? Jim he Jarmusch. Sent, he only sent me my parts that I was in. Yeah, I thought and that was, it was nice. Just hysterical. And you'll either like that, you either go with it or you find that eggy. I, I, I mean, I, I liked it. I, I liked thought it was it a, too. I thought it was a neat, silly. None of this film is to be taken seriously. No, no, no. And, and yet you can see that there's a filmmaker and people involved with it who love cinema and love yeah. film. The problem I have with indie cinema now is, is, is that there isn't any really true indie cinema. It's like everyone's trying to manufacture indie cinema. Yeah. And so it's so self-conscious. So they take missteps. Yeah, they the take time, missteps, yeah. but this has all the kind of artifacts in, in the casting of all people who are genuinely indie folk. Yeah. And it feels like a celebration of indiness. So I think if you're into an American indie yeah. cinema, this is a real celebration of all that 
that stuff. Yeah. yeah. What, what, what I really liked about so I'm now into the sewing upstage, yeah. but one of the things I really liked about it is the way they do play. I mean, Adam Driver and Bill Murray are the two main characters. And they're in the car together throughout the whole film and they riff off each other but very deadpan. Mm. But then you get Chloe, and I'm a huge Chloe Sevigny mm. fan, and this she packs the socks off. She um she's resolutely for real. She's yes. for real, and yes. she's scared to death of zombies, and she thinks these two are balmy. And and they're at the point where they're all trapped in the car, she can't stay. In the end, she thinks death mm. of being eaten by a zombie is can't be well. Because her than grandmother this. zombie is smacking at the side of the door. Smacking of the at car the side. So well. she gets out and is instantly taken up yes. by the zombies. They kind of just didn't comment on that though, did they? No, but I like the fact that she played the whole film for she did. real. Well, so we we expected in a way her to act as if. Yeah, she would. I agree. I do think this was a. I think this was a, a big tick in the Chloe Sevigny yeah. sort of marker yeah. book. You see what you get from the word go. I love the relationship between the, the actors. I loved all the funny bits of postmodernism, whatever you want to call it, mm. meta meter. Mm. I just made me roar. It's done with such affection. Yeah, yeah, such, yeah I, um, think so. I think yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, it was really, really nice yeah. to see. Yeah. I will score it. That's no, 8.5. 8.5. Yeah. Um, there's one other scene, just before I sum up, there's one other scene that just was hysterical, but you have to watch it to really get it. But they all pull up in their police car and da 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 at the, at the diner after the first deaths. And uh, and Adam Driver pulls up and there's an electric mini car. Kiki thought that was so it, funny. It's so funny. You can't even explain it, but the way in which it happens is just hysterical. Yeah. It is hysterical. Well, one, well Kiki actually said to me at that point, this the tallest man in the world has appeared in the smallest Always. car in the world i mean which is <laughs> very true. funny but in a very gentle almost non-revolutionary way this film is quite revolutionary i think mm -hmm. i think it not only sends up quite obviously all the zombie tropes that we're used to but i think it sent it sends up so many other tropes as well it sends up the cop buddy cop film yeah yeah very it much. sends up the small town america yes. uh, society vibe uh, it sends up the motel uh, yeah. sort of horror yeah. uh, drama they even reference uh, the Bates motel and uh, and and it also sends up sort of cop procedural films where you know cars pull up and there's scenes of drama like the crowd control and the red car so i thought this film was working in a very sort of low key lounge course slightly spliffed out of its own head way to mm. upset and lampoon and take the piss out of hollywood conventions yeah. and yeah. i think to that extent it's it's an absolutely it's a little gem. It's a little gem. And I'd say that at the moment, where there's not actually a lot out new this week, this is the film you should choose yeah. if you want to be marginally kind of entertained. Or like us, we were fully entertained. I really yeah, enjoyed this. I, I really did. enjoyed I this. Did. I thought it was great fun. Um, so I'm going to give it, um, I think I'm going to give it 8.75. Oh! Slightly more than you. I'm yeah, going to go okay. into that area. But yeah, no, you know, for me it was a return to form for Jim Jarmusch. I didn't like coffee and cigarettes and I liked no, this. No, I didn't like that. I liked this. For more film and family fun, don't forget to click the subscribe button and make sure to click the bell to never miss an update.